Carbon monoxide and dioxide discovered at the edge of the solar system. Astronomers analyzing the chemical composition of objects orbiting Neptune discovered that some of them contain carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. These discoveries could help scientists better understand the formation of the solar system and how various celestial bodies migrated during this process. Beyond the orbit of Neptune is the Kuiper Belt, a vast zone, very similar to the asteroid belt located between Mars and Jupiter, but much wider. It contains countless small objects that are remnants of the formation of the solar system. In addition to space debris, there are dwarf planets orbiting there, Pluto, Haumea, and Make Make. Unlike the asteroid belt, where rock and metal objects orbit, the Kuiper belt is mostly composed of objects composed of solidified chemicals, such as methane and water. The Kuiper belt begins approximately beyond the orbit of Neptune, about 30 astronomical units from the Sun. Astronomical unit, O, 1 O is a distance equal to the distance of the Earth from the Sun, about 150 million kilometers. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, and its infrared radiation analysis capabilities, astronomers from the University of Central Florida detected carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in the form of ice on 56 of the 59 studied trans-Neptunian objects TNOs, i.e. objects located beyond Neptune's orbit. The description and results of the observations were published in the journal Nature Astronomy. Astronomers reported the discovery of carbon dioxide on 56 trans-Neptunian objects and carbon monoxide on 28 of them out of a sample of 59 objects examined using JWST. The analyses show that carbon dioxide may be widely distributed on the surfaces of objects orbiting beyond Neptune, regardless of the class and size of the body. Carbon monoxide was only detected in facilities with high carbon dioxide content. The research suggests that CO2, in the form of ice, was abundant in the cold, outer regions of the protoplanetary disk, the huge spinning disk of gas and dust that eventually formed the solar system. The authors of the publication indicate that further research is necessary to understand the origin of ice containing these compounds. The discovery could help us understand the formation of the solar system and how various celestial bodies migrated during this process. Trans-Neptunian objects are remnants of the planet formation process, says Mario Nascimento de Pra, co-author of the study. These discoveries could place significant constraints on where these features were created, how they reached the region where they are now located, and how their surfaces have evolved since their formation. Because they were formed at greater distances from the Sun and are smaller than planets, they contain impeccable information about the original composition of the protoplanetary disk, he adds. This is not the first discovery of ice containing carbon monoxide in the TNO population. A few years ago, the New Horizons spacecraft flew by Pluto. Analyses from this close flyby confirmed the existence of carbon monoxide on the dwarf planet. As for carbon dioxide, it is present in many objects orbiting the solar system but it was not clear whether it is also found in larger quantities in objects beyond the orbit of Neptune. The discovery of carbon dioxide and monoxide on TNO provides some context, but also raises many questions, although carbon dioxide likely comes from the protoplanetary disk, the origin of carbon monoxide is more uncertain. It is a volatile compound even on cold TNO surfaces. We cannot rule out that carbon monoxide accumulated on these objects and has somehow been preserved to this day. However, the data suggest that it could have been produced as a result of radiation from ice cream containing carbon, the PRA points out. 
Confirmation of the presence of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in TNO opens many possibilities for further research. The discovery of carbon dioxide on trans-Neptunian objects was exciting, but even more fascinating were its characteristics, says Noemi Panilla Alonso, co-author of the study. The spectral trace of carbon dioxide revealed two different surface compositions. In some TNOs, carbon dioxide is mixed with other materials such as methanol, water ice, and silicates. However, in another group where the main components are carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, the spectral signature was unique. This distinct trace of carbon dioxide is unlike anything seen on other bodies in the solar system, he adds. When carbon dioxide is present in large quantities, it appears isolated from other materials, but this alone does not explain its unique spectrum. Scientists indicate that this may be related to its optical properties and the way it reflects or absorbs certain colors of light. It has previously been speculated that carbon dioxide may be present in TNO because it exists in a gaseous state in comets. In comets, we observe carbon dioxide in the form of gas released by the sublimation of ice on or just below the surface. However, because carbon dioxide had never been observed on the surface of TNO, the common belief was that it was trapped beneath the surface. Our latest findings challenge this thesis. We now know that carbon dioxide is not only present on the surface of TNOs, but is also more abundant than water ice, which we previously thought was the most abundant surface material. This discovery radically changes our understanding of the composition of TNOs and suggests that the processes affecting their surfaces are more complex than we thought, emphasizes Panilla Alonso. Although we found that CO2 is ubiquitous in the TNO population, it is certainly not evenly distributed, says Elsa Henault from the University of Paris Saclay. Some objects are poor in carbon dioxide, while others are very rich in it and also have carbon monoxide. Some objects contain pure carbon dioxide, while others contain it with other compounds. Linking the properties of carbon dioxide with orbital and physical parameters allowed us to conclude that changes in carbon dioxide levels are probably representative of different areas of the formation of objects and their early evolution, he notes. The researcher also indicates that the protoplanetary disk from which the solar system was formed may have contained carbon dioxide, but it is unlikely that carbon monoxide was primary. Carbon monoxide can be produced by constant bombardment of ions from the sun or other sources. We are currently investigating this hypothesis by comparing observations with experiments that can reproduce the conditions of freezing and ionization of the TNO surface, he explains. Now other questions arise. What is particularly important, considering the origin and evolution of carbon monoxide? Observations across the entire spectral range are so rich that analyses will certainly take scientists many years, says Henault, 